Good evening and welcome to the Sky Zone HD Game of the Week. We are here in West Jefferson, North Carolina for a chilly football Friday night. Uh, I'm Dusty Farmer. Along with me, as always, is the man, the myth, the legend, Mark Cutler. And Mark, it's a cool, uh, good night for football. Yeah, it's definitely football weather tonight. Uh, of course, a little warmer in Wilkes, so maybe that'll be a factor. But there's no wind. It's just a good, cold, brisk night. Ash comes in tonight, big favors, but if we learned anything last week, these games are not played on paper, they're played on the field. No, which, I mean, East Wilkes, a good football team, and uh, like you say, they're not played on paper. Biggest thing I want to see, and we talked about it sort of some last week, is uh, they got to put four quarters together. They've played good football, but in the uh, even in their winning, four-game winning streak, they did not play well in the second half. And, Mark, that must mean we're spending too much time together because our first Ash County Ford key to the game tonight is execute for four quarters. Huskies have yet to put together four complete quarters. Well, yeah, I guess I got ahead of you there. But, yeah, just like I said, and, and that's really a key because, you know, even in the Elkin win, we didn't score in the second half. And last night, which you got to give East Whoops all the credit. I mean, they come out here in the second half, and it was, like we said, the tale of two games there that just totally dominated us. Our second Ash County Ford key to the game is cut down on penalties. The penalties have killed drives, took, taken away touchdowns. We've just had way too many penalties the last few weeks. Yep, just like you said, sort of sound like a broken record here. Last week, I think we got inside the uh, red zone two times and had the, uh, of course, the offensive pass interference penalty. And then the, the uh, I think it was the where he uh, – didn't have a receiver in the area, so yeah. uh, definitely got to cut down on that. One thing we've been doing good is not turning the ball over, but we had one big turnover that really turned the game somewhat too. And like we said at East Wilkes, it was them that had the first big over turnover that turned the game last year. And our final Ash County Four key of the game is Mark. It was an emotional game last week, an emotional loss for the Huskies, and the Huskies have to put all that behind them. That's gone and forgotten about. Yeah, I mean it's you know it's been talked about. So like a lot of people said, got to get over it and go behind. Uh, of course, they just did not play well in the second half. Of course, they had a few things that didn't go their way, but that's water under the bridge. They, I, I did like what I seen on Twitter. Uh, Dawson Cox, of course, Ash County quarterback, put out. Out there, you know, bounce back week. We got to put last week behind us. So, be interesting to see. Like you said, they're a big favorite. Dr. Pepper players to watch tonight first for Ash County is Bowen Krause. The last few weeks, Bowen has averaged over 100 yards on the ground and almost 100 yards receiving. Last week, and just a little over one half of football, he had five touchdowns. Yeah, I mean, he's filled in for Timothy Peterson uh, great. I mean, uh, and the offensive line's gotten better again. Uh, we're going to be without Peterson, but uh, Bowen's been very capable of what he's doing, and he's he's actually a little better at receiving the ball, like you said, and, and he's just extremely fast, and it's his senior night, so hopefully he'll have a big night. And for Wes Wilkes, it's the quarterback, Jackson Jarvis. If Wes Wilkes has any chance to tonight, he has to play well. Yeah, he does. He's their leader. He's their catalyst. Play, had a good year last year, having a good year this year, but they do not score a lot of points is one thing. So, uh, I mean, you know, uh, and if we hit hold our average, but, you know, like we said, they don't play them on paper. And, Mark, one thing we've yet to mention, but I'll let you talk about a little bit, it is senior night here in Ash County. Last year we had 18 seniors, had a long list to go through. This year we've only got four. Yeah, got four seniors here. Of course, Bowen Kraus, which we've mentioned, Isaac Miller, Drake Elliott, which we'll mention a lot through the games, and, of course, Colby Baldwin. So, uh, hopefully they'll go out with a win tonight. Looks like Ash County will kick the football off to start the game. They, they won the toss and received. So, we, and of course, we always know they're going to take the football. We always talk about how aggressive they are offensively. Doing the kicking duties once again is Peterson for the Huskies. <laughs> well, uh, Coach Elliott out here with the short sleeves on, he's trying to act like he ain't cold, but he's bound, bound to be cold. Well, you see Avery Barr do that a lot. I think Barr's finally – He's got a few years. He's got a few on years him. on him, and uh, he's learned to wear some sleeves. He's wearing a toboggan tonight. Yeah, yeah. Peterson to kick off for the 40, from the 40 for the Huskies. Football Friday night here at Ash County High School. As we wait for him to blow the play to start. Yeah, he's 
And the kick is deep, going to be taken at about the 20-yard line up across the 30. And we'll be taken down just short of the 35. Yeah, so uh, pretty good coverage there. Of course, we've had problems covering the kick, but we've done a much better job. We've done a good good job last week and much better job. Good job tonight. They are going to start at the 35-yard line here. Let's see, you know, after last uh, the second half last week, let's see if this defense can get back to what we're used to seeing. I feel like, Mark, they're going to come out tonight with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. I would think so, and, of course, what we saw or what I saw on film, uh, West Whip's going to pound and ground. They're going to run the play clock and just try to really uh, control the football and keep our offense off the field. Black Hawks come out in eye formation, turn around and hand it to the fullback, and he's going to be met at the line. He might get a short one-yard gain. And like we said, uh, they've done a well of a job that with that this year, stopping the run up the middle where we've had trouble is on the outside. Yeah, the only thing that really gave us problems last week was that read option. We just It's like we never were comfortable with who had the football. Yeah, they've done an excellent job with it. The quarterback made good reads all night long, and, you know, we was sort of talking to the coaches after the game, and he hadn't he had turned the ball over at least once all year and didn't turn the ball over. High formation once again for the Blackhawks. Turnaround is going to be a pitch to the big running back to be stopped short of the 40. Might have picked up three or four there, but th there's a little bit of a difference. Uh, good run by Rash. He's a he's a good football player, but uh, good job running him down. So it brings up a big th third down, and we'll call it uh, about eight or seven or so here. So that and they don't like to be in that position. They're, they'd rather it be third and two or at least third and under five. Yeah, they're not really set up to throw the football. We do have a stoppage of play. Oh, you mean play the, clock. Uh, yeah, the play clock. Not play clock. And just it's like the play the clocks are not working. The play clocks are not working. And no matter where we go, it seems like there's uh, there's always play clock issues. And I think it's where they jinxed it and they went to the 40-second play clock this year. It, it, it really has. Everywhere we've been, they've, they've had to cut it off. Well, I mean, I don't think systems were really set up. I mean, they were just set up to go to 25, and they've had to try to redo it. Yeah, and it's just really – it has caused a problem. <laughs> I think the only person you will find that enjoys that 40-second play clock is Hobbick over on top. Yeah, yeah, he loves it. Oh, and the Huskies jump off sides, and that was one of our Ash County Ford keys of the game is cut down the penalties. That's going to make it a much more manageable third down for the Blackhawks. Oh, wow, they're going to call it a false start. He said that evidently they moved over there, but it sure looked like the Huskies. Uh, it looked like the whole defensive line. Yeah, got in there quick, but somebody on the left side, so that's even better for the Huskies here. So, uh Really, it'd be interesting to see. It's, it's third and 11, third and long here. It, I look for a screen or something, maybe if they throw it. Third and 11 for the Blackhawks. Stay in the I formation, tight I formation. They look to throw on third down, throwing across the middle. It's completed. He's going to have the first down and more on the slant. He's at the 40, 30, 20. 10 and will go in for a Black Hawk touchdown. That was just we had one receiver running around and he caught it and was gone. You're, you're too tight. Uh, I formation, like you said, they just run the slant pass, let us get inside. And they, we let them get inside of us. Good throw by the West Wilkes quarterback, and uh, that's Jackson there. Of course, we talked about him before the game, and we missed a tackle or two, and he took it to the house. Yeah, once he got some green grass in front of him, he was a uh, very capable. He ran away from some Husky defenders. He sure did. And uh, definitely not the start you want here. But uh, anyway, uh, we, we, we said they didn't play them on paper, but that was a very good play right there. And, you know, Mark, I was looking back. This West Wilkes team put up 36 points against East Wilkes. Hmm, I didn't realize that. So, hey, they, evidently when they get it going, they can put some points up too. Jackson rolls out, got a man open, and he is in for the conversion. So Blackhawks take the early lead on their opening drive and will lead eight to nothing with 11 minutes to go here in the first quarter. Yeah, uh, of course, like we said, the Huskies going to get the football here, and they, of course, they're going to from behind here, and they just got to stay hot. Uh, of course, the offense, especially in the first half, has not been a problem the last four of the five weeks. So they got to come out here and uh, get these points back right here. 
If you take a look at our Miller Insurance scoreboard, some big games as far as Mountain Valley Conference is concerned tonight. East Wilkes at Elkin and Star Mount at Wilkes Central. Yeah, oh yeah, especially of course we got our eyes on that Elk and East Wilkes game and in and, and uh, Star Mountain Wilkes Central, of course, uh, we better worry about what we got in front of us cuz I tell you what, this uh West Wilkes teams come out here and uh, I would say they're a little shocked right now, but they've come out here and put a drive together and uh converted a big third down play and uh, Huskies going to get the offense on the field here and I I don't see yeah, I see Poe now, but I wouldn't expect them to kick it anywhere close to him. Yeah, Hampton's kind of moved him around all year long. Poe's going to stand at the 20 with Kraus back at the 10, along with looks like Drake Elliott on the opposite side. Blackhawks lead 8 to nothing. And it's an onside kick, and it's going to be – Recovered at about the 48-yard line, 47-yard line of the Huskies. Yeah, you know, going to start a great field position here, which, you know, I guess this West Wilkes team's win. Figures we ain't got nothing to lose. Uh, you know, don't want to really kick it back there to them, but going to have good field position, and they need to come out and get an answer here. Yeah, I don't know how many onside kicks we've seen in the last few weeks, but it has been a plethora of onside kicks. Yeah, we sure have. Uh, of course, I think some of ours accidentally. <laughs> Four wide receivers for the – excuse me, five wide receivers. We're going to go empty backfield, and there is a flag down. Looks like Swilk's going to be off sides. Well, yeah, um, you know, uh, of course, they were uncertain on Krause's uh, if he was going to be able to play tonight, so they did work on this quite a bit this week, uh, so I was told. Mark with the inside information. Five wide receivers once again for the Huskies. Cox looks to throw, gets it out quick to Kraus. He's across the 50 up to 40 and going to be tackled to the mountains, and it's like a horse collar penalty as Kraus is pulled out of bounds. Yeah, come out like you said, just move Kraus out of the backfield, and like we talked earlier, he can definitely catch the football, just throw a quick little screen out here to him. Got a good block, and he gets up picks up 11 yards and then there was uh, going to be a foul here uh, for a horse collar, horse collar tackle looks like so it's going to tack on some here. You know, a personal foul horse collar against the Blackhawks. So move the ball up for the Huskies. Husky's going to go to the two-back set now as Ryan Blevins checks in the backfield along with Krause. J.J. Manning shifts in. Cox looks to throw on first down. And he gets it in the middle of the field. Looks like that is to Ballard. Yeah, uh, of course, he ballard on the shallow. It looked like he was trying to get over there to the um, the slant, but they covered it up pretty good. He had plenty of time. Good job by the offensive line. And he uh, just throws it to Ballard. Ballard with a nice uh, nine-yard pickup. Four wide receivers now for the Huskies. Cox in the gun stands at the 20-yard line. They motion Miller across. Looks to throw, throws it sidearm to a wide open Austin Poe, and he is in for a Husky touchdown. And that, I don't think that was Austin Poe. That was JJ Manning. All I see was the white sleeves and just thought it was Austin Poe. Yeah, nice job right there. Again, had plenty of time. They really done a good job covering on the outside and stuff, and he went underneath their nice uh, run by JJ. Looks like the Huskies are going to go for two. We'll try to get that point back, I guess. Offense stays on the field, forward wide receivers. They motion Miller across. Cox looks to throw, throws it, and wide open. Austin Poe. 
So we're all tied at eight here with 9.56 to go in the first quarter. And we'll take another look at that touchdown reception by J.J. Manning on our Greens Excavating Insta Replay. Okay, your Ash County Ford drive summary. It took the Husky only three plays. They went 53 yards. It ended in a 15-yard touchdown pass from Dawson Cox to J.J. Manning. The two-point conversion pass from Cox to Poe was good. So with 9.56 left in the first quarter, that brings your score. Your Ash County Huskies eight, West Wilkes Blackhawks eight. Huskies set to kick it off. Andrew Peterson will do the kicking duties once again for the Huskies. North Wilkes has scored a touchdown. They now lead Allegheny 7 to nothing. And the kick's going to be taken at the 30-yard line, trying to get outside. There is a good job on the return or the uh, by Blevins and J.J. Manning. Yeah, J.J., good job covering there, a little 60-yard return. Pretty good kick. Uh, of course, uh, I think you're kicking it high on purpose, but they're doing a much better job covering kicks. And that field's a little tore up there in the middle talking about the rain. So this defense, uh, they, they've been on their heels for about two quarters and uh, started this game. So let's see if they can come out here and get a, a big stop. Yeah, Mark, it last – Two or three days we've had every season there is to have. We've had summertime, we had springtime, we had fall, and even a little bit of winter last night. Yeah, we did. Uh, I don't see how the little kids done it trick or treating. It was tough, but you know I managed. Blackhawks handed off on first down across the left side, and they picked him up off the ground, but no slams this week. No, no slams tonight, uh, which was good. Uh, which that's about a three-yard pickup, but a good job there stopping them on first down. Actually, they're going to give him about four, so uh, West Wilkes for them, they're right on track. They are close to the line of scrimmage in that I formation. Yeah, they're sort of in the straight eye now or power eye or whatever you want to call it, but it's too tight. It's foot to foot, and they're just going to bring it at you. Hand off once again, and he breaks through. He's up to the 50 yard Ball does come loose, and looks like the Huskies have recovered. Yeah, I mean, and right there, that's a good run by uh, West Wilkes again, just a break for the Huskies. I couldn't really tell who was in there on the tackle, but a good job. Uh, they're uh, uh, forcing a turnover and see if his Husky offense can take advantage of it. it looks like Ryan Blevins from that linebacker spot on that side come up and at least recovered the football. Huskies will take over right at midfield. Four wide receivers. Cox checks the play from the sideline. Looks like he's going to change things up. Looks like he's doing something there, so uh, better get it off the back judges counting. Like and he fakes the handoff. They're going to get it to Manning on the screen. And he's across the 50 up to the 45, and uh, that was pretty much all J.J. because Jacob Miller missed that first block and then picked it back up on the back end. He, uh, he uh, made him uh, miss there, but, you know, that's what you try to do on the screens. But he did miss the block. Good job by uh, J.J. A nice eight-yard pickup right there. Second and short now for the Huskies. 8.59 to go here in the first quarter, all tied at eight. Huskies trying to capitalize off the turnover. Cox takes the snap, looks to throw on second down. Got it across the middle, and it falls incomplete. Yeah, that was complete or intended for Ballard there. Throw was just a little behind it, but one they'd like to have back. Just, uh, just didn't connect right there, so brings up a big third and three play here. And, Mark, I don't know that we've seen the Huskies even hand the football off yet. Uh, no, we have not seen the Huskies hand the football off yet. Kraus in the backfield with Cox. Three receivers to his right. 
looks to throw on third down and he dumps it out of the backfield to Kraus and he's got the first down and more still on his feet and big Nice pickup out of the backfield for Kraus. Yeah, nice job there. Picked up seven yards. And I tell you what, which I've said it all year, he's fast, he's shifty, and he's got a little bit of power for a guy that's not real big. He sort of trucked the defender over there to make sure he was going to get the first down. Nice job there by Kraus. He just gets up to top speed so quick. Yeah, he's, he's very fast and quick. Four receivers, three to this side. Poe, the lone receiver to the top. Cox looks to throw, and he gets it to Poe on the out, and he is makes two guys miss. He's finally going to be pushed out of bounds at about the 15-yard line. Yeah nice, yeah, nice job. Of course, that was just a quick out there. Poe was open, and Cox laid it right in there. 8.21 to go here in the first quarter. Still tight. Eight Huskies are driving there at the... 15 yard line of the Blackhawks. Cox looks to throw once again on first down. Throwing the out to Poe. He dives forward and they call it incomplete. Hard to, yeah, the ball. It's hard to tell from this far away. Yeah, that, he, I know Cox would love to have this throw back. I think that is Poe. Uh, and uh, great effort, just couldn't come up with it. They bring up second and ten from the fifteen. Now she's going to go back to two receivers to each side. Got a motion, ballot across. Cox is going to pull it down, take off. He dumps it off to Kraus, and he is in for the Husky touchdown. Once Kraus got it, he was gone. Yeah, sort of where he left off there. Nice job by Cox getting away from a little pr pressure. And, of course, he didn't really want to run it, so he just uh, dumped it out to Kraus, and Kraus done a good job there with a nice 15-yard touchdown. Good touchdown run by Krause. Looks like Huskies are going to go on for the PAT this time. So Andrew Peterson will be on for the PAT. Snap the hold. The kick is up. And it is good. So Huskies now lead 15 to 8. And we'll take another look at that. Dawson Cox to Bowen Krause touchdown on our Greens Excavating Instant Replay. Okay, you're asking only four drive summary. The Huskies went 50 yards. It took them six plays. Ended in a 15 yard touchdown pass from Dawson Cox to Bowen Krause. Andrew Peterson added the extra point kick with 7.50 left in the first quarter. That brings your score at your Ash County Huskies 15, West Wilkes 8. Only other score in our Miller Insurance scoreboard to update. Wataga well, has now scored. They are up 6 to nothing over Freedom. North leads Allegheny 7-0, and Owen leads Avery right now 7-0. Still no score in the Star Mount Wilkes Central game or the East Wilkes and Elkin game. As Andrew Peterson has it teed up at the 40. That, that North Wilkes game is a pretty big game, too. They're definitely, like you said, some big games tonight in the Mountain Valley. Number two has it, and he tries to get to the outside. Still on his feet, and he's going to be taking it about the 28-yard line. That is Dylan Ball. Yeah, it looks like Elliott and uh, Curran over there on the uh, tackle. Good job there. Pretty decent return by uh, Ball right there. But uh, this Husky defense has got to come out here and start playing some football. Cause, uh, they got to start tackling. Yeah, they do. And we uh, got the turnover last time, but West Wilkes was moving the football there. So yeah, They'd already picked up the first down before he fumbled the football. Yeah, and we really, in the first series, we didn't do a whole lot. But uh, got to give West Wilkes credit. They come ready to play. Blackhawks have it on the 29-yard line, first and 10, 7.41 to go in the first quarter. Handoff up the middle, and he's going to pick up 
probably three or four yards right on schedule for the Blackhawks. Yeah, just uh, like we said, it's going to be pretty much um, handed here, handed there, sprinkle in a pass every now and again. But uh, they they won't throw it a whole lot if if they don't really feel like they need to. So, uh, but like you said, that's a nice uh, four to five yard pickup on first down. <clears throat> Ball on a thirty three yard line now. And off of the middle once again, and he's going to have the first down and more. It took several Husky defenders to bring him down. I tell you what, uh, like you said, they better start getting low on some of these big boys here because I tell you, uh, West Wilkes right now offensively is having their way with them. Uh, so uh, they're definitely controlling the line of scrimmage. Uh, absolutely, they are controlling the line of scrimmage. <clears throat> First and ten now from the 43-yard line. High formation once again. And off to number 44 on the left side. He's going to pick up four or five yards once again. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, not, not a whole lot to say. Uh, pretty much about the same play. And, uh, I guess if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But yeah, they, they, and I'm sure they want to just control the ball and keep it out of the Huskies' hands. Absolutely. We said that earlier, and, and right now they're doing a very good job at it. And maybe, I mean, the best thing the Huskies could hope for right now, unless they just sure this up, is get another turnover. <clears throat> Second seven now for the Blackhawks. And the quarterback's going to keep it. He's trying to get the outside, and the Huskies are going to stop him short. Yeah, that's a good play right there. Of course, they went away from this sort of up the middle. Yeah, and you got to do that a little bit and try to get outside, and we've done a very good job. I believe it was um, – Elliott on the tackle. Yeah, Elliott coming there from his outside linebacker position. So, uh, big, another big third down play here, third and seven. And we know what happened last time, so we just need to see if we can uh, force a punt right here. Blackhawks on the 46-yard line, 520 to go. And looks like they left early, but Huskies are going to stop him at about midfield. It looked like they all left a little early. It sure did, or we left really slow. So anyway, uh, going to bring up fourth down right at 50-yard line. It's going to bring up a big fourth down play right here. I mean, I would think West Wilkes is going to go for this. You one and seven football team, you got nothing to lose. Yeah, nothing to lose. And, and, I mean, they've been getting uh, three and four yards of crack, so they feel like they got a good chance at it. Blackhawks will leave the offense on the field fourth and four with the 4.44 to go here in the first quarter. Maybe trying to draw the Huskies off sides, and they're going to call a timeout. So we now may see the punt team come on. Yeah, we may see the punt team, or he may want to make sure that he knows what, you know, everybody's on the same page here. Be, this is interesting uh, call right here for the West Whoops coach, but I think we will see uh, – I think we're going to see him go for it. But like you say, with him calling the timeout, he may – he's definitely rethinking his first decision, I would say. Absolutely. And it ain't like they have a lot of – different formations they can line up in and just they ain't going to spread the Huskies out that we know of. Unless they've got something different in there. Like you said, one thing here, and we said it on the last time, the Huskies got to come out and watch the football. It does look like maybe they're going to line up and punt formation, but it's a great spot on the field for a fake also. Absolutely. Now they're going to line up. Lining up in the straight eye. Fourth and four. Don't fall asleep on one of them tight ends slipping out too. And it's a pitch to the left. And Drake Elliott right there going to tackle him for a loss. Yeah, they smothered that up pretty good. Like you said, good for the senior right there. Big play on senior night for him. Uh, that's a good stop for this Husky defense. And now we need to definitely get some more points on the board. Huskies will take over in Blackhawk territory. The 48-yard line. 4.33 to go here in the first quarter. Huskies lead 15-8. to eight. Four receivers, two to each side. A 
Cox takes the snap, looks to throw on first down, gets it to Ballard. He's trying to run across the whole field. He's at the 40, and he's going to be pushed out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. He will have uh, another Husky first down. Nice job right there. Uh, of course, it, it, Westbrook's leaving is leaving that middle of the field wide open, and we're taking advantage of it. Good job by uh, Cox and uh, to hook up there with uh, Ballard. Huskies go back to the two-back set now. Blevins checks in. He's in the backfield along with Cox and Kraus. Huskies look to throw once again. And he's trying to get it out to Ballard, and I think he caught that nice catch. Yeah, nice job. Of course, we tried that play to Poe a minute ago, and it was open this time, and Cox really laid a good pass in there. Nice job by Ballard there on a nice 20-yard uh, completion. Yeah, that was a great catch. He took some contact and still came down with it, so it'll be first and 10 from the 12. First and 10, 3.55 to go here in the first quarter. Huskies lead 15 to 8. Two back set once again. Cox looks to throw. He's got all day. Rifles across and is behind J.J. Manning. Yeah, just he had him open and uh, just sort of threw it a little bit behind him. Boy, he did, like you said, that was a rocket shot right there. Uh, give West Wilkes some credit there. Their secondary had everybody covered up pretty good when he, his first initial look. So, uh, but we just didn't connect on that, had a chance. We'll bring up second and 10 from the 12 now. Huskies quick back to the football. Fake the handoff, get it to Miller on the screen. He cuts back, he's at the five. He's gonna be down to, it looks right at the five yard line. Yeah, just went back to the little screen play again, which like we talk about, that's sort of an extension of our running game there. Nice, well, that seven-yard pickup right there. So big third and three coming up. Third and three Huskies can get a first down. Four wide receivers, two to each side. Cox to throw on third down. He's looking right and throws it kind of sidearm. It is tipped and it is caught by Austin Poe. And it's going to be close to a first down, judging by the spot. On the spot here, he, is, he looks like they're going to put him about a yard short here. So here comes a big uh, fourth down play. Uh, like you said, we do not have to score, but we're about a yard short of a first down and uh, about four yards short of a touchdown. May see the Huskies run the football for the first time tonight. We may do it. Two back set for the Huskies. Handoff is to number 32, Ryan Blevins. He cuts back, and I think he's got the first down. I tell you what, it depends on the spot there. That's a good, hard, tough run by uh, Blevins there. But I tell you, that West Wilkes defense wasn't giving in right there. And that's going to be close. I don't know if he got it or not. Oh, no. No, he's going to turn over on down. I, I, was, I was afraid of that. They uh, you got to give West Wilkes a lot of credit right here. Uh, of course, they got a long way to go here. But with their style of play, that's a huge stop for that defense. So it'll be first and 10 from the West Wilkes three yard line. West Wilkes got 97 yards to go. Two thirteen to go here in the first quarter. Huskies lead 15 to eight. It hasn't been a very long first quarter. <laughs> yeah, it has, of course. The Huskies, that's the first run by the Huskies tonight there. So, uh, but they've completed a lot of balls. And it's like he fumbled. And it's going to be well, close. Looks, they did have a mishap with the snap or something there. and it's, He's marking it on, I mean, just uh, just barely outside the end zone. So, the uh, Huskies did almost come up with a safety right there. Good job by the defense and keep them right there. 
going to be second and long at the, we'll call it the one foot line for the Blackhawks. And look like they're going to throw. They're going deep, and it's going to fall incomplete. No flags on the play. Yeah, um, that's that's not a bad uh, play right there. Uh, of course, try to give yourself a chance to get out from the sh uh, back of the end zone, and then we had great coverage on it, but it wasn't that far from not being incomplete. But good job right there. So third, and like we say, it's right there on the one foot line. So uh, be interesting to see what they come up with right here. Yeah, I'm sure they watched the film last week and seen the Huskies give up a like, 91-yard touchdown pass. Yeah, I mean, and, and that was in a hurry, yeah. too. So. Yeah, they, they and they're going to throw once again. He's going to scramble out of his own end zone. He turns up the field and makes a couple guys miss, and he's going to be tackled at about the 12, 13-yard line. I'll tell you what, good good effort there by uh, Jarvis there. Of course, um, not like Gabe Bear got in there and finally got him down, but that's going to bring down definitely, I would think, a punting situation here. Fourth and five, but uh, that's a great effort. He almost got out of there went from almost being sacked to picking up the first down. One thing to note, uh, he came up hobbling off after that tackle. Well, man, he laid a pretty good lick on him there. And, yeah, he looks like he's hobbling off there a little bit. Poe back at the 40-yard line. Don't jump. And it's going to... Kick, he kicked two Poe at the 40. He makes one guy miss, shoves him down. He's at the 30, runs through another tackle, and he's going to be pushed out of bounds at about the 25 yard. There's a flag down. Maybe an offensive pass, or offensive face mask. We seen that last week. Yeah, we sure did. Uh, we seen a lot of things last week. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh be interesting to see what the call is here. Pretty good return by Poe. Hold against the Huskies on the return. Yeah. I'm going to move it back for the Huskies. 13 and a half seconds to go here in the first quarter. Huskies lead 15 to 8. So they're going to take over the Blackhawk 40 yard line. Three receivers to Cox is right. And takes a snap, fakes the handoff, and loses the football and falls on it. And it's like that's going to do it for the first quarter. So at the end of the one, the Huskies lead 15-8. We'll be back in the second quarter on the Sky Zone HD Game of the Week. Ash County Ford in downtown West Jefferson wants to be your first and only choice for all your automotive needs. They offer a lifetime warranty on most of the vehicles they sell. They offer the best prices on new Fords and pre-owned vehicles, service parts or body shop repairs, and locally owned and operated with the friendliest and best staff they are your answer for anything automotive you need. The High Country's Ford dealer since 1919. Ash County Ford. You make the drive, we'll make the deal. When it comes to insuring your home, business, automobiles, and property, you want an agency you can depend on. Miller Insurance has been serving this region for more than 60 years and are proud to now represent Everett Cash Mutual, which specializes in insuring farm property, equipment, livestock, and more. Before you renew your insurance policies, give us a call at 336-246-7151 or come see us in downtown West Jefferson. Miller Insurance is proud to be your hometown insurance agency that supports our hometown teams. 
Welcome back to the Sky Zone HD game of the week as we get ready to start the second quarter. Huskies lead 15 to 8. They do have the football, but it's second and 17 from the Blackhawk 47 yard line. Yeah, uh, of course, that first quarter was pretty entertaining, but this Husky team the last two times had great field position. They need to take advantage of this. Cox takes a snap, looks to throw. And he's going deep down the sideline, and he overthrows J.J. Manning. Yeah, he, he um, like he, he did overthrow him there. J.J. had a little bit of a step. But I tell you what, we're going to have to throw it. This uh, Blackhawk secondary is playing deep. They're looking to give us everything underneath and come up and make some tackles. But we had a chance right there. But, uh, like I said, another big third down play. If you, you don't have to get all of it. You need to get some of it, and then you probably go for it. Third and 17 from the 47. Cox looks to throw. Got pressure up the middle. He gets rid of the football and falls incomplete. And a late hit looks like it's going to be against number 44. And that's going to be a big penalty if we think it's what we think it is, which it looked like roughing the passer here. So let's see what they do call. Mm. I don't know that. Uh, yeah. It was third and 17, and it's going to be a 15 yard penalty from the spot. It's going to be just short. But it looks like a personal foul will be automatic first down. Yeah, so a break again by the Huskies here, uh, for the Huskies here with the late hit on the quarterback. So. Go ahead and the ball here on the 32 and get to continue to drive. Cox looks to throw once again. And he's going to Poe. He's got him open on the wheel and just overthrows him. A like pump and go there. He had Poe open. Yeah, there's uh, it, yeah, he was wide open. That's one you definitely would like to have back there, but he just overthrew him just a little bit. To bring up second and ten from the thirty-two now for the Huskies. Huskies kind of working quicker tonight than normal. And they get it to Poe on the screen. He gets one block from Ballard. He breaks another tackle and it was slipped down at about the seventeen yard line. Yeah, nice job right there. They've had some success with the screens. And like you said, Thomas Ballard got a really good block for him. I thought he was going to split them and go there, but good job by West Wilkes to uh, not let him take it on in. Be first and 10 for the Huskies once again. Cox looks to throw on first down. A lot of time to throw. Gets it to J.J. at the 10. He makes one guy miss, and he's going to be tackled at about the three-yard line. Yeah, nice job, and he had all day to throw it. West Wilkes is really doing a good job on the back end covering, especially the deep. Again, it was there in the middle of the field, and uh, uh, had plenty of time to survey and uh, waited for him to come open, and J.J. done a good job after the catch. Yeah, J.J. just kind of worked back to the football. Caught it in the middle of the field. First and goal now for the Huskies. Clock looks to throw. He's got Poe open and overthrows him. Yeah, he just – that's sort of a little fade route there, and he just sort of threw it too high right there. So, listen, we really need to get this football in down here. You know, last time West Wilkes come away with a big stop. Second goal from the three-yard line. <laughs> And off is to Krause, and he's going to get in for the Husky touchdown. That's Krause's second touchdown of the night. Yeah, Krause again. Uh, you know, he, like we said, he's done a well of a job. Nice three-yard touchdown run right there, and that's a big score because uh, you know uh, take advantage of uh, a good stop down there by the defense. But that's a real big score. This team 
West Memphis has played well so far. Huskies now lead 21 to 8. PAT for Andrew Peterson. Kick is up. It is good. So we'll take another look at that Bowen Krause touchdown run on our Greens excavating instant replay. Okay, your Ash County Ford drive summary. The Huskies went 40 yards. It took them eight plays, ending in a three-yard touchdown run from Bowen Kraus. Andrew Peterson added the kick. So with 10.46 left in the second quarter, that brings your score. Your Ash County Huskies 22, West Wilkes Blackhawks 8. One score update for the Husky fans in the Mountain Valley Conference. East Wilkes and Elkin are now tied at seven. You know, that, that's going to be a pretty good football game. And, of course, everybody knows they're three miles apart or five miles, whatever it is. They don't like each other. They're walking distance. Yeah. So, uh, that's good. And I think it, it, that game's in, um, I believe, in Elkin tonight. It is at Elkin, yeah. So, that'll that be a fun football game to watch. Peterson to kick off. And going to kick it toward the sideline. Takes a bounce at the 30, and they luckily fall on it. Husky's close to recovering that one. Yeah, almost got a break right there. Uh, of course, the sky kick again. They're doing a good job getting down there. Almost recovered it there. But let's see if this Husky defense can uh, improve again here on the night and get another big stop. They've come out and then done a little better with this uh, running game. So on your Miller Insurance scoreboard, North Wilkes leads Allegheny 14 to 13. That's going to be a pretty good back and forth football game, I think, down there. And that's got big playoff implications too for both of them teams. I formation once again for the Blackhawks, and off to number 44. And Huskies are right there. He's only going to get a. Maybe a one-yard game. Yeah, that time they, they won the battle up front. West has really been physical with them up front, but that time that defensive line, Keegan Church, and a few of them in there won that battle right there. So that's a good job. That's what you want to do. You want to keep them, you know, right there, even with the chains or behind the chains. And, Mark, one thing we've yet to talk about, um, Kenny Witherspoon is out now for the season. Yeah, I'd uh, sort of – we hadn't mentioned that yet, but yeah, he's had some a kidney issue or something, but and we hope him to have a speedy recovery. Number five completes the pass, but the Huskies are right there. Going to pick up three or four yards, tackled by Jacob Miller. Yeah, good job right there coming up a little short, hit the back out of the backfield there, a little short pass, and a good job coming up to tackling like he said, Jacob Miller, and he had some help from his buddies. Third down and four from the 36. Huskies look like they're bringing pressure up the middle. And they ran by, but the Huskies defensive line right there, they're going to be maybe a one yard game. Yeah, we like you said, they did. They brought the backers up in there expecting to run, of course, and they blitzed it a little bit, but the line and all of them done a good job on that. So you would expect, uh, well, I don't know. Like we said, uh, uh, it looks like they're going to run a play here. We'll see what they decide to do here on fourth down. His ball's on the Blackhawk 38-yard line. It's fourth and three. You're one and eight football team. I mean, might as well go for it. I mean, you know, and I think they are. And it's a pitch to 44. Huskies trying to come up. They're going to stretch it out, and he's going to be just short. Yeah, from our angle, it looks like he's just short, but that is going to be pretty close there. So we'll see what they if they measure. It looks like they're going to put it on his foot there. Good effort there by uh, sure. West Wilkes Blackhawks. Yeah, they're going to measure this one. 
did pass that line. And I mean, to me, it looks like he needed. To, of course, we can't see because of the officials, but it looked to me when he went down, he was short. The first initial look, it did. But where they spotted the ball, it's going to be fairly close to a first down. It's fixing to be a first down for somebody. Either way, it's a first down. <laughs> And it's going to be a Husky first down, Mark. Boy, and the way they he took a good long look at it, it's got to be really close. But that's a bit, another big stop here. He could have broke out the car like in the NFL and just measured it there. Oh, yeah. And that's a big stop here. And we need to see if we can put some more points on the board. That was only close if it was horseshoe. So it will be Husky first down on the 41 yard line. Huskies lead 22 to 8. Trying to add to that lead. Four wide receivers, two to each side for the Huskies. Krause and Cox in the backfield. And he's going to throw on first down. Looked across the middle, and he's got it complete to Miller. And it's a good nine-yard pickup on first down. Yeah, uh, like I said, they're playing this deep, and we're going to have to take this underneath stuff and see if we can get them to come up, which we have been. Uh, but a good, good job coming up and tackling there, but a nice uh, eight-yard pickup on first down. 8.05 to go in the first half. Huskies lead 22 to 8. Second and short. Cock looks to throw once again, and he's going to Poe on the out. And it is complete for the first down. Yeah, like we said, that's pretty much our bread and butter right there. Uh, we throw a lot of outs. When in doubt, throw the out, right? Yep, and I mean, we do a real good job with that, so a nice play. Three receivers to the left, Poe the lone receiver to this side. And he gets it to Poe. He makes one guy miss, turns it outside. He is at the 12, going to be taken down at the 11-yard line. That's just that's just a stand up quick and uh, throw it out to Poe, and he made a guy miss, and then they done a good job around him. But a nice job by Poe picking up good hard run, picking up. Uh, they're going to give him uh, 10 yards there, so first down, and looks like it's going to be gold here for the Huskies. Balls on the 11. Looks like Huskies can still get a first down. Two back set now for the Huskies. Cox looks to throw once again. Throws it to JJ. Back shoulder and it is incomplete. Yeah, once again, and then, you know, he had him open just a little behind him there. JJ made a real good attempt at it, but just couldn't come, come down with it. Second and ten now for the Huskies. Ballard comes in. Levins comes off. Going to be four wide receivers. Again, two to each side. Cox looks to throw on second down. He's surveying, pulls it down. Now he's going to take off. He's at the 10 and going to be tackled right there. He might have got a yard right there, not much. Uh, so, But a uh, good job by West Wilkes getting some pressure in there on him. And, again, I'm, I'm, the West Wilkes done a good job covering these receivers on the back end in their zone coverage there. So good job right there. And but Like you said, the Huskies can get a first down without scoring, but it's uh, – Gonna we'll be pretty close either way. Third and nine. Cox trying to go to Poe. He's got him back in the end zone. Touchdown, Huskies. That was a good throw by Dawson Cox right there. That was a great throw by Dawson Cox. He didn't have to break stride, laid it right in there, and just, uh, you know, he's had him over here one on one. And anytime you're going to get that matchup, you're going to try to take a shot at Poe, especially down here on the, in the end zone. Peterson on now for the PAT. Snap 
is low. Uh, he's gonna get it off and it is good. So Huskies now lead 29 to eight. We'll take another look at that Dawson Cox to Austin Poe touchdown on our greens excavating instant replay. Okay, your Ash County Ford drive summary. The Huskies went 41 yards. It took them six plays, ended in a touchdown pass, nine yard touchdown pass from Dawson Cox to Austin Poe. Andrew Peterson's extra point kick was good. So with 6 14 left in the second quarter, that brings your score. Your Ash County Huskies 29, West Whoops Blackhawks 8. Take a look at some scores on our Miller's Insurance scoreboard. Of course, here at Ash County, Ash County leads 29 to 8. Watauga leads Freedom 27 14 and Freedom. Owen leads Avery at Avery 21 to 6. Allegheny and North Wilkes in a close battle. North Wilkes leads 21 19. Star Mountain Wilkes Central still scoreless and East Wilkes and Elkin tied at 7. And it's a deep sideline kick once again, taking it to 25. By number eight, he is across the middle up to the 40 and going to be tackled at about the 44-yard line. Good uh, good return there by number eight there. Uh, 31 for us brought him down. Uh, the Hawks are going to have a really good uh, field position here. First and 10 from the 44, 607 to go in the first half. Huskies lead 29 to 8. See if this Huskies defense can come out and stand tall once again. Did get a turnover on downs in the last series. I formation once again for the Blackhawks. And it's going to be a sweep on the reverse and good tackle by Drake. Elliot. I tell you, that's a great play. He shed it. I mean, it's pretty much he done it how it's taught. He shed his blocker, kept him on the inside, and then stepped in there and made the tackle. Just a very good play there by the senior linebacker. Going to bring up second and long for the Blackhawks. 538 in counting to go here in the first half. Huskies like to get a stop here. They do get the ball to start the second half, which is, of course, unusual for them. High formation once again for the Blackhawks. And it's going to be handoff to number 44. Big hole. Good tough run in there. Uh, look like uh, Blevins brought him down. Yeah, Blevins brought him down again there. But this defense is playing a whole lot better. We're getting a little better push up front there. Earlier in the game, they were wearing us out up front pretty much. Yeah, they were. They were kind of manhandling us. We've kind of settled in now. It's third and short for the Blackhawks. High formation hand off to the fullback, and the Huskies are going to tackle him just short. It's going to be really close. Looks like Peterson and Elliott in on the tackle. Yeah, good, good hard run in there by the West Wilkes running back. I think he's, uh, I think he got it. Must well know where they're standing. He looks like a little short, but of course you would expect him to go for it here. And I'm just going to take another measurement. That is close. That is really close. So what do you think, Mark? Think he's short? Half a yard short. Oh, I'm gonna, I don't know. It's super close. Yeah, I'm going to go he's uh, short. Yeah, he's going to be awfully close. That second effort there, I thought he had it. It looks like he's going to be short. Maybe about a yard short. Yeah, he's a good Not near as close as I thought it was. Uh, of course, going to bring down, uh, for, bring up fourth down here. <laughs> so 
So give us it's gonna be another fourth down play here, and uh, I'm, you know, right across the 50, they're gonna definitely, I would think, go for it. And the big thing here is, is uh, need to watch the football and just. Uh, you don't want to give them a free first down. No, don't want to give them a free first down, and I wouldn't fall asleep on the uh, pass here, the tight end or something, because they've not done that a whole lot. No, and they burned us on that slant in the first series of the game. Two tight ends. And hand off to Big 44, and he's got the first down. Yeah, that is Dallas good, Rash. Pretty good penetration there, but I tell you, Rash is a pretty good size young, and uh, he, he's going to get a yard most of the time right there, or half a yard, what they needed. Good job by West Wilkes picking up the first down. He is a 5'9, 210 pound senior. Yeah, he's a, he's a thick young man. First and 10 from the 44, four, 15 and counting to go here in the first half. And looking to throw the tight end down the middle of the field. He's got it, and he may break away. He's going to be finally tackled at about the five-yard line. Yeah. And you caught it, Mark. Keep it on the tight end. Yeah, well, I mean, you, they had you lulled to sleep for that. And uh, with the way we play our defense, sometimes, of course, that man, that middle of the field's going to be wide open. Got to give West Wilk some credit there, Doug. Daggone good play call there. So let's see now if the Huskies can uh, bow their neck here with four minutes left until the half and to hold them out. Be first and goal from the four yard line. 350 to go. Power eye once again for the Blackhawks. And off is to number 44, Rash, and he may be in. He is in for a Blackhawk touchdown. Just a good, hard, tough run, and these uh, Blackhawks have come to play here. That's a big score for them. Uh, of course, Ash is going to have plenty of time with three timeouts left, and they definitely need to keep putting points on the board. Looks like they're going to go for two. And we've talked about it before. Extra points are huge. They've been huge in some of these Husky games. They definitely have been. You know, like last week, the basically the botched uh, uh, snap. Hand off is to 44. He breaks tackles. He is in for the two-point co conversion. Huskies will now lead 29-16. Yeah, he, uh, he bulled his way in for the two-point conversion. And right we've talked about it several times. Of course, you talk about it a lot, Mark. When we start tackling high, you can't tackle him high. No, he's too big. Like you said, uh, what, 200 and what did you say? Pounds. 10 pounds. And he's just a tree trunk pretty much. And uh, didn't do a good job there getting him low. But uh, I tell you, we, we got a ball game here tonight. Looks like now over in Newland, Owen leads Avery 28 to 12. Pretty good football, two football teams with similar records. Yeah. Wataga keeps being Wataga. They now lead 34 to 14. And that game's pretty much for the uh, conference championship tonight for uh, the Pioneers. How many years in a row is that for them now, Mark? Do you have any idea? Three, I think. Three. I think this will be three. Here we go. Run it back. Blackhawks to kick off. And they're going to kick it toward the sideline. It is taken by Poe. He's at the 30. Cuts back at the 40. And will be tackled at about the 40-yard line. Actually, that wasn't Austin Poe. I think it was Kraut. We'll see who gets up. Yeah, yeah, it's Kraus. Yeah, on them jerseys, the sevens and the ones are hard to tame. Especially, I've been trying to decide who's wearing sleeves, who's not wearing sleeves yeah. tonight. And... <laughs> Poe has on the black sleeves. Yeah, and Kraus is, yeah, white gloves. Let's see here, uh, of course, like we said, 329 left. Uh, plenty of time for this SQL. Plenty, and they've come out really throwing the football a whole lot more tonight. Huskies lead 29-16, 329, four wide receivers for the Huskies. 
Cox looks to throw him first down. And he's going across the middle. He's got a man. It is J.J. Manning. And he's all the way down. He's still on his feet. He's going to be tackled at the 16-yard line. Yeah, nice job right there. Uh, plenty of time again. This offensive line has done a tremendous job here. And uh, J.J. done a good job with the catch and a good job after the catch. And they tried to strip the football and they put two hands on it. So that's something also. Just a big pickup right there. Three receivers kind of bunched to this side. And they dump it to Krause out of the backfield, and he needs to hit hard on that sideline. Yeah, he might have got a yard. And like you said, he, he took a pretty good shot right over there on the sideline. But and like we've said, he's a pretty tough character, and he bounced right up. Second down for the Huskies. 2.30 to go here in the first half. To the Cox looks to throw and it's a low throw and it's going to fall incomplete. Yeah, that's uh, just uh, one they didn't uh, catch on. Going to bring up third down from the 16. Of course, you know, probably four down territory. They're probably going to go for it here. Yeah, just need to get some of it, if not all of it. But, yeah, they'll probably go for it down here unless they get take a big sack or something. And they try to get it to Poe on the screen. He cuts back and really nowhere for him to go there. Yeah, they've done a much better job uh, covering the screen up right there. You got to give them some credit. They might have picked up a yard or two, but not not a whole lot there. Good job there by the Blackhawk defense. Be fourth and five. Minute fifty-three and counting. Cox looks to throw. He's got Krause out of the backfield. It's a low throw, and he's going to fall down. And he gets that to own Krause. That's a touchdown. That is, yeah. That's uh, he just a little low right there. And, I mean, he had Krause wide open and just uh, just didn't get the ball to him. So, they're going to turn over on downs, give this Blackhawk team some credit. They got a minute 33 left here. And, of course, uh, they are capable of throwing the football, and they really got to set up for the run here. So let's see if we can get a stop here before the half. I mean, yeah, if we had the, the yardage breakdown tonight, they've probably got more yards through the air than they do on the ground. Uh, yeah, they probably do. But uh, just um, they've come to play, and uh, right there we're, we're just missing some uh, good opportunities. The little things. The little things. We're not taking advantage of the opportunities they've given us. First and ten. Two wide receivers now for the Blackhawks. They look to throw, and they're going to take a shot. And it's completed at the 35, and he's going to be run out of bounds. We said it. I mean, and you know, that's uh, – I mean, I hate to say it, uh, Andrew Peterson's got a lot better out here, but that has been Achilles' heel for Ash covering the pass this year. And in, in recent weeks, teams have had a lot of success throwing the football against us. And it's been big plays. It's yeah, I mean, been chunk funny. plays. Yeah. That's that's the thing about it. So, uh, but here they get a big play right there. That of course there, with the first down and out of bounds, they don't have to worry about the clock running out on them. But they're doing a good job here. One twenty-seven to go, and they look to throw again. Hit the slant. It's completed. He's at the fifty. Still on his feet, going to go down to 45 and a flag, and that may be a face mask. The way he went down and stuff, that probably is a face mask. And then another flag coming in from behind. So, be interesting. Be multiple flags against yeah, us. Probably going to be live ball, dead ball here, so let's see what happened. But where this one come from, I don't know what 
could have happened right there. But anyway, we're fixing to find out. Personal foul face mask against the Huskies. Okay. So I guess he had the same thing. He threw that thing pretty daggone late, though. Yeah. Well, the gloves, you know, it's cold. He had a hard time getting it out. His... Yeah, he could have. He could have definitely been reaching for it and not get it. But uh... Looks like the Huskies are going to take a timeout. Yeah, here. And, I mean, he needs to regroup these guys. This is <laughs> – I tell you, this is a big. Uh, they need to hold them. It has an eerie it. feeling to it, doesn't it? Yeah, and the uh, Blackhawks get the ball to start the second half. Also, no, I think we get the ball to start the second half, don't we? No. Yeah. No, we kick the ball off. Okay. Start. They come down and scored on their first drive. Okay. Okay. Well, that would that's even better. But yeah, we definitely need to get a stop right here. Minute 19 to go here in the first half. One score update for you. Wilk Central does lead Starmount 7-6. to six. That game is at the half. And East Wilkes and Elkin are still tied at the half. So it'll be first and 10 from the 30. Two receivers once again for the Blackhawks. And hand off to the fullback, and he's not going to get a lot. Yeah, and, uh, of course, Westwoods does have two timeouts left. Of course, we're on that time to get off, but a uh, little three- or four-yard pickup. But we'll give him that. Clock running just at a minute. And the fumble on the Blackhawks fall on it, so they're going to lose yards on the play. Looks like they're going to take a timeout as well. Yeah, they are taking a timeout right here. And I tell you, the Blackhawks have made a few mistakes or this game could be tied. But and the th sad thing is for the Huskies is they really haven't capitalized on those mistakes. Yeah, they've, not, they've not taken advantage of them. So, uh, but right there, that's a big loss of uh, four or five yards right there on a pretty much just a mishandle on the snap. It's going to be third and 13 with 53 seconds to go. Huskies lead 29-16. Owen now leads Avery 28-12. North Wilkes leads Allegheny still 21-19. Big third down for the Blackhawks. And they're going to throw on third down. It's got all day to throw. Throws it across the middle, and it's picked off by Austin Poe. Oh, no, say, excuse me, J.J. Manning. He is at the 30. And he was pushed out of bounds at about the 29-yard line. Yeah, nice job. Nice return by J.J. Just an overthrow. J.J.'s at the right spot. And a good job there by the defense to force another turnover. 39.5. Ash does have two timeouts left. And, no, they're probably not going to set on the football. So they will probably take a shot right here. Or that's usually their M.O. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Mark. I don't think they're going to set on the football. I think they're going to try to get some more points on the board. And timeout Blackhawks. That is their last timeout. So Marcus well documented you're a little more conservative, but I mean we seen them take some shots late in that game last week and you know, it wasn't for some bad calls. I mean yeah, pick up some big yards. I mean, that's the, that's the way they do it, and they're definitely I would be shocked if they don't try to get a touchdown right here in the last 39 seconds, especially with two timeouts. Of course, West, West Wilkes burned another one of theirs right there to make sure. Of course, West is definitely, you would think, is going to back way up and try to keep them in front and make tackles. So, uh, But you can use the whole field with timeouts. Yeah, Ask Kenny's only used, what, one timeout? Yes, sir. To be first and ten from the thirty-one. Three receivers to his left. Poe the long receiver to this side. Crowd 
Ross. And he's going to get rid of the football, and it's like it's probably going to be a hold against the Huskies. Yeah, where that flag was thrown, that's definitely going to be a hold against the Huskies. So that's going to be a pretty good size penalty right there. Uh, looked like he tried to get Kraus on the wheel route there again out of the backfield, and uh, they done a good job of covering him that time. Second. And we'll see what after the penalty will be second and four ever. Wow, that's really backing it up. Spawn Yeah. I'll be surprised. Second and 30 for the Huskies. Yeah, that's a huge penalty from the spawn of the foul. Cox looks to throw, and he's got a lot of pressure, and it falls incomplete. They were actually trying to set the screen up, and the West Wilkes Blackhawk just basically took Kraus out, which they can do that. So uh, behind the line, they faked the ball to him, so he's pretending to be a runner, and he had nobody to throw the ball to. Second and 30 now. Hand off to Kraus up the middle. He's got a lot of room. He's at the 30. He's across the 40, 50, 40, 30. No flags. Bowen Kraus in for the Husky touchdown. Uh, that was just tremendous right there. He got a great block by Poe right at the end of the run that really sprung him outside. But when he hit the sidelines, uh, of course, we talked about his speed. He just outrun him. A nice job right there by Ash County. Huskies now lead 35 16 with 14 and a half seconds. Let's see Peterson come on for the PAT. <laughs> Low snap. And it is good. So Huskies now lead 36 16 with uh, 14 and a half seconds to go. And we'll take another look at that Bowen Krause touchdown run or Green's excavating instant replay. Okay, your Ash County Ford drive summary. It only took the Huskies three plays. They went 90 yards. It ended in a 90-yard touchdown run from Bowen Krause. Andrew Peterson added the extra point kick. So with 14.5 left until the half, that brings your score. Your Ash County Huskies 36. Your West Wilkes Blackhawks 16. So we'll take a look at our, excuse me, Miller Insurance scoreboard. Not the only other score update we have is Watauga and Freedom Games a little closer now. Watauga leads 34-21. That, I think that's a huge score right there for Ash right before the half. And uh, got the peanut gallery over here with the uh, conservative play call. That was a conservative play call. Just turned Mr. into a big play. Mr. Krause just made a great play. <laughs> and Gabe Bear on the huge tackle on the kickoff. Him and his sidekick both right there. Ryan Blevins, uh, good job on the kickoff there. 11 seconds left until the half. <laughs> Eleven point one to go. We'll see what the Blackhawks do. That's just gonna back them up at Poe and Man and stand on the fifty yard line. Two deep safety look. And it's a pitch to 44. 
He's got blockers, but Ryan Blevins right there to take him down for the loss on the play, and that's probably going to do it for the first half. So Huskies will get the ball to start the second half, but at the end of the first half, Huskies lead 36-16. We'll be back with Sky Zone HD Game of the Week after the break. Ash County Ford in downtown West Jefferson wants to be your first and only choice for all your automotive needs. They offer a lifetime warranty on most of the vehicles they sell. They offer the best prices on new Fords and pre-owned vehicles, service parts or body shop repairs, and locally owned and operated with the friendliest and best staff, they are your answer for anything automotive you need. The High Country's Ford dealer since 1919. Ash County Ford, you make the drive, we'll make the deal. When it comes to insuring your home, business, automobiles, and property, you want an agency you can depend on. Miller Insurance has been serving this region for more than 60 years and are proud to now represent Everett Cash Mutual, which specializes in insuring farm property, equipment, livestock, and more. Before you renew your insurance policies, give us a call at 336-246-7151 or come see us in downtown West Jefferson. Miller Insurance is proud to be your hometown insurance agency that supports our hometown teams. Welcome back to this guy's own HD game of the week as we get ready to start the second half. Huskies lead 36-16, to and Mark, it was an up-and-down half, I think, for the Husky. Yeah, played pretty good in spots and uh, missed a couple opportunities. Uh, Cox had a very good first half, uh, missed a few balls that he has been connecting on here lately, but overall played a good first half, you know, 36-16 uh, at the half, sort of. <laughs> Hate to say it, but the same situation we was in last week, and we did talk about it earlier. We need to come out in the second half because we've not played real well in the second half last couple of games and establish something here and see if we just can't spread it out a little more here. No, offensively in the second half, we've really struggled almost all year, to be honest. I mean, just haven't been able to put the points up. Well, you know, just like if you want to go way back, like you said all year, you know, the high Brighton game. Oh, yeah, we were leading. Yeah, we were leading, score 18 points in the first half, and – I can't remember what the final was. You didn't score in the second. I did, that's what I thought. And then, of course, we did win the Elkin game, but we didn't score in the second half. Uh, great defensive effort. And, of course, we all know what happened last week with uh, basically a collapse in the second half. Uh, so they need I, to I guess you could say the Wilk Central game is the only game we really played pretty good in the second half. Yeah, we did. But, you know, they come back and we didn't play yeah. still as good as we did in the first half because what we – Went to the halftime of that and put 48 points on the board mm -hmm. in the first half. So, now we may have only scored seven points in that second half. Now think about it. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we, you know. So we need to look to uh, finish strong here and have a much better second half. Blackhawks will kick off the football to start the second half. Huskies deep to return. And it's kicked toward the sideline and will go out of bounds. Right around the 36 yard line, it looks like. This kids will probably just take it right there. I would think they would definitely take the ball right there. So, uh, see what happens here. See if this Husky team can come out and uh, get something started offensively. Going to have really good field position. Yeah, I think the procedure is going to move it up. Why would you move it up? <laughs> I'm going to get the ball on the 41 yard line. It looks like it went out of bounds at the 36. Yeah, we'll take it. But hey, we'll take it either way. 41 yard line start the drive for the Huskies. They lead 36 16. Cox looks to throw on first down, gets it out to Ballard. He's got it at the 50 and going to be tackled in Blackhawk territory. Thomas Ballard is brought down by Shane Pelicano. That brings the ball into West Wilkes Nice uh, start to the half there. Uh, Pope uh, almost got a good block out here. If he gets a block, we might score right there, but a nice start to the second half. First and 10 from the 44. Cox looks to throw. Gets it to Krause out of the backfield. He's up to almost the 40-yard line. 
pass complete to Crowell. He's pushed out of bounds by Alex Rowland. And nice little what, four or five yard pickup right there. Um, Again, out here to Krause play. and uh, of course just keep moving the chains and finish the drive right here but a good start of course and they uh, should have counted in the first half but they have really thrown the football a whole lot tonight yeah they have Cox looks to throw gets it to Poe on the out and he just drops it goes through his hands that's one he don't drop a lot. No, he don't drop many, but like you say, that's just flat out uh, nice throw by Cox. Put it right on him, and that's just a drop. We're up third and six now for the Huskies. And it looks like Wes Wilk's going to be off sides. I don't know if well, it's going to be give them a yard short, but it's sure going to make it a whole lot easier on the Huskies here on third down. Yeah, it looks like the guy kind of just – he was trying to get into his stance and just kind of fell forward. And, he didn't break it by much, but uh, we'll take it, I guess. Anyway, uh, could, could change your play call here some, but anyway, it makes it a whole lot easier. Third and short now for the Huskies. And they get out to Poe on the screen. Makes one guy miss. He's going to have the first down. And he's still on his feet. They're going to blow it dead. Like you say, come back out here, a little screen pass. Uh, Poe makes one guy miss and uh, picks up about five yards for the first down. Now we got a flag here. It looked like the West Wilkes guy was sort of talking to the official. And whatever he said, he didn't like it. Must have been nothing good, anything? <laughs> yeah, probably not. What, and how's your day going? How's it been? Nah, it didn't look like it. So it looks like we're going to have a dead ball foul here. <clears throat> going to be unsportsmanlike against West Wilkes. That's going to move the ball up even further for the Huskies. Yeah, West made some mistakes here tonight, and uh, this one's going to hurt here. Gonna be a big 15-yard penalty. Gonna put it inside the red zone here on the 15-yard line. So uh, it's gonna be first and 10 for the Huskies. It will be first and 10 from the 15. Huskies can still get a first down without scoring. They lead 36-16, 10 55 to go. Cox empty backfield looks to throw. Rifles it to Poe. He almost gets into the end zone. He really put some steam on that one. I tell you what, uh, that was a very good throw there. Like you said, put some steam on it. And Poe almost made a heck of a play there to spin out and go ahead and score, but nice job right there. It's going to bring up first and goal for the Huskies from the two yard line. Cox looks to throw, trying to get it to Poe at the pylon. He is in for a Husky touchdown. And that's just a real nice timing route right there. Uh, uh, Cox putting the ball right in the spot to the outside where only Poe could get it. And just real nice uh, timing and execution on that play right there. Yeah, that's one of those he just throws toward the pylon and Poe just comes and gets it. Picks up the Husky touchdown. They now lead 42-16. As Andrew Peterson will be on for the PAT. And the kick is up. It is good. So Huskies now lead 43-16. And we'll take another look at that Cox to Poe touchdown on our Greens Excavating Instant Replay. Okay, your Ash County Ford drive summary. The Huskies won 86 yards, took them six plays, and then in a two-yard touchdown pass from Dawson Cox to Austin Poe, Andrew Peterson added the extra point kick. So with 10:24 left in the third quarter, your Ash County Huskies 43, West Wilkes Blackhawks 16.
A couple of score updates for you on our Miller Insurance scoreboard. Owen now leads Avery 47 to 12. And Allegheny now leads North Wilkes 26 to 21. Wilkes Central and Starmount and and the East Wilkes and Elkin score. Of course, Elkin has now scored again. They now lead 14 to 7. Short kickoff taken at the 43. So it'll be a good starting field position for the Blackhawks. So nice uh, coverage there. Uh, Blackhawks are going to have 39 yard line here. And uh, defense just needs to come out and uh, continue to improve and see if they can shut them down here. Yeah, they really need to come out and get a couple score stops, a couple stops, get some scores, and really just kind of. Put this thing to bed. Yeah, put it to bed. Yeah, they definitely need to do that. And a big run on first down. He's going to get it across the 45. Going to be second short now for the Blackhawks. And that's, that is one thing. You know, Westbrook's in a bad situation because their offense is not built to come back. And this isn't East Wilkes' offense out there. It's definitely not East Wilkes' offense out there. I mean, you know, East Wilkes had the style where they could have a chance to come back, and they did. But uh, well, it, just got to keep playing. Number three to the outside. He's got a big hole on that outside. He's going to finally be pushed out of bounds by Jacob Miller. And one thing that, that West doesn't have and not many teams do have is the speed that East Wilkes had last week. Oh, yeah. And, you know, of course, we talked about it before the game watching them on film and it was really – they were faster. And, uh, than I expected it, yeah. Yeah, than they looked on film. So, yeah, very talented. They are trailing Elkin right now, 14-7. to seven, And we've talked about it. We thought Elkin was the most athletic team in the conference. By far. Now, that's just my opinion. But, I mean, they were big and fast up front and just a very good team. Hand off to the fullback on first down. And he's not going to get a lot. Yeah, and they had that defensive end that came along in the second half and just lived in our backfield. It is, I mean, they've only lost two football games all year. So, uh, and they won to the Huskies. And then you think the order, other one was to uh, East, Mount, Sur East Surrey or Mount Air. One of those so, teams. Two yeah. very good teams, but – just, uh, yeah, that's a good stop for the Huskies on first down, just letting them pick up a yard. 8.56 and counting, second and nine. Power either going to throw to the tight end once again, and he's got it. And he's going to have the first down. And, and from here, that looks so slow developing. Huh? Well, they sort of delay it a little bit, I think, to make sure they get that good fake to the running back. But that's been a successful play for them tonight. Of course, they scored uh, on it early or there in the first half. Uh, so they they moved to change here and keep their drive alive. See Bay, Gay Bear come out favoring his shoulder. Probably got a stinger. Yeah, he, he got a stinger. Where was it? Down at Elkin this year. And it, he missed a few plays, but he's a tough nut. He'll probably be right back out there. And he's still on his feet, and he's going to be, be close. He may even – it's still going to be about a yard short. Yeah, it sort of looked like a rugby scrum there at the end of it there. Bring up second down for the Blackhawks. Good looking drive put together here so far for the Blackhawks. A very nice drive here by the Blackhawks, you know, trying to go down to one thing, we, like we said, is their offense really, you know, if they're going to continue and stay in this pace, the Hussies going to have to do something to help them to get back in this mm -hmm. game. Second and three from the 21. Power eye formation once again. Hand up off to the running back, and he is rumbling all the way down to about the 10 yard line. A little cross buck play. Yeah, a little, that is a big little uh, trap block there, and they opened up a big hole for uh, young man right there so uh again nice big uh run for uh the blackhawks yeah that was rash on the carry i think for the blackhawks first and goal from the 10.
And off the number three, and he is going to get in for the Blackhawk touchdown. That is number three, Garrett Patrick. And that was just a good, hard, tough run. He had a little bit of a hole in that, like you talked about. These Huskies are getting up high again, trying to tackle, and they just don't do a very good job when they get up there. So, uh, nice drive by West Wills. Now 43-22 as West Wilkes are going to go for two. She smells better than you too. Hand off up the middle, and that's a huge hole. Rash in for the PAT. He just kind of walked into the end zone. Yeah, he pretty much went in untouched on that. Huskies now lead 43-24. See if there's any score updates. The Elkin and East Wilkes game is actually now into the fourth quarter. Elkin leads 14-7. And there's definitely one thing about it, Mr. Farmer. Coach Hampton is not happy with his defense. Uh, he didn't hardly let him get off the field. He met him in about the numbers, and uh, the head was Another bobbing. Another come, come to Jesus meet like last week. The head was bobbing, and the finger was pointing. So uh, he was upset uh, with him on that drive right there. And, you know, you know rightly so. They just kind of let West just kind of drive down the field. I mean, they kept it. Well, they had the one pass to the tight end, but they kept it on the ground for the most part. Yeah, done a very nice job on that right there. So let's see if the if the uh, offense can come out here again and stay hot. Huskies back deep to receive. Update on the Wataga score. That game is now in the fourth quarter. Wataga leads Freedom 41-33. And Poe's going to take it at about the 10. Across the 20. Up to the 30, cuts back. He's got one man to beat. Uh, now he's going to try to get outside and tackle nicely at the 35. Well, actually, pretty nice coverage there uh, to get down. I thought he had a chance there to get to the outside, but a very nice tackle by the, by the Blackhawk defender out there. So uh, we are going to have good field position here. And we have one last call for this 50 50 ticket. We'll pull another one here in about 653. Huskies take over, leaving 43 to 24. First and 10 from the 35. Three receivers to this side, manning the lone receiver to the top. We'll be calling another one here in a couple of minutes. Cox to throw on first down. He's looking. He's got Ballard at the 40. He's still on his feet. And, you know, we've talked about it several times. When Ballard runs, he runs hard. And he is a very strong kid. He uh, lives in the weight room, uh, does a lot of weightlifting. He's very strong. He's not... Per se, the, he's not slow, but he's not the fastest kid. I think he could beat us in the foot race. Well, yeah. yeah. He runs very good routes and got uh, sure hands and a nice job. And he's just getting better and better. That's the sophomore right there, too. And he's not really played a lot of receiver as far as, you know, even coming up through 7th and 8th grade in JV as Cock looks to throw him. First down, he's going across the middle to Poe, and he just overthrows everyone. Yeah, just uh, had a chance there, and we just missed it again on the long throw right there. So uh, I'm going to bring up second and ten. I heard you guys talking, Mark, maybe three rushes in the first half. Of course, Krause probably still got over 100 yards, but only three rushes. If uh, if if my numbers are right, we've thrown it 45 times so far in the game and uh, only run the ball three times. Cox in the gun, and just like we said, he's going to hand the ball off, of course. Yeah. Right Could we tackle for a loss? Looks like he slipped when he tried to cut there, but they got good. West got good penetration right there. Looks like he's going to lose about two or three yards. Third and 12 now for the Huskies. Just under six minutes to go here in the third quarter. Three receivers to this side, manning the long receiver to the top. 
Cox looks to throw. All kinds of times going to step up and he's going to throw it to Jacob Miller. And he's going to be dragged down. See where they spot him down at the 14 yard line. 13 yard line. Nice job by Cox. He had plenty of time initially and then it sort of broke down a little bit. He done a good job getting out of the pocket and uh, Miller done a good job running with him and getting open there. So what? That's about a 40 yard pickup right there. So just a nice play. Cox in the gun at first and 10 from the 13. Cox looks to throw. Got some pressure. He's going to get rid of the football. And he just uh, got rid of it there. Luckily, he did have uh, Blevins there, receiver, pretty close. But good pressure by uh, West Wilkes that time. Good job by Cox not taking a sack. Second and 10 now from the 13. <laughs> Three receivers to the field. Poe the lone receiver to the boundary. And they're gonna throw the screen. It's like that is to Manning over there and he's not gonna get a lot. He's probably gonna lose a yard. Well, no, he's gonna gain a few yards. Yeah, they, uh, d they're doing a much better job there covering up the screen, but we've had a lot of success with it. And uh, like you say, picked up about two or three yards right there. So big third down play right here. Third and seven, four, 39 to go. Cox looks to throw on third down. Got He's got a man in the end zone. It is a touchdown. That's the Ballard. Yeah, nice job right there. They run that little, uh, what I call a uh, flag route type play tonight two or three times and uh, connected on a couple times. But nice job right there connecting on it for a touchdown. Yeah, good throw by Cox. Nice catch by Ballard. I want to see Andrew Peterson on for the PAT. That kick is good. Huskies now lead 50 to 24. We'll take another look at that Thomas Ballard touchdown catch on our Greens activating instant replay. Okay, your Ash County Ford drive summary. The Huskies won 85 yards. It took them seven plays, ended in a 10-yard touchdown pass from Dawson Cox to Thomas Ballard. Andrew Peterson added the extra point kick with 4.33 left in the third quarter. That brings your score. Your Ash County Huskies 50. Westwood's Blackhawks 24. Husky said to kick the ball off. One score update for you. East Wilkes and Elkin are tied in the fourth quarter. But that's been a very entertaining football game to I'd watch down in like Elkin. So. I'd, and I'd say it's a packed house. Yeah, I'd say it's standing room only. It ain't like there's a lot of room. And, as they, and the Huskies are trying to recover, and they may have. The Huskies are going to get the onside kick. I got a put, I, I don't, pooch kick, we'll call it. I don't know. I think he, I, it definitely wasn't, I don't think, intentional. I think he was trying to go with the high pooch kick again. And, of course, we've seen Mr. Peterson about miss a couple, and he basically yeah. about missed the ball. But the Huskies do end up coming up with the football. Yeah, if this was golf, we'd tell him to keep his head down because I think he about missed that one. Huskies get it back, leading 50-24 to 24 with 4.31 to go in the third quarter. Cox in the gun's gonna look to throw, gets the screen out to Poe. 
Gets a nice block from Ballard. He's still down the sideline. Going to be taken out of bounds at about the 23-yard line. Nice job there by uh, just, again, a little quick screen, screen, which, you know, we talk about a lot. We try to get Poe in space, and he usually does good things with the football when he gets it in space. First and 10 once again. Cox fakes the handoff and has the screen pass batted down. Yeah, just trying to get it back out there quick again. And really, I mean, that's a throw when he gets it. No seam, no, you don't look for the seams or anything. And he's just trying to throw it out there quick to him. Second and 10 now from the 23. 422 to go in the third quarter. Clock stops on the incomplete pass. Two receivers to the field. Poe, the lone receiver, to the boundary. Handoff is to Kraus, and he's cut down at the 20. Yeah, it's a very good tackle there by uh, number eight, and uh, he picked up about, what, four yards right there on a pretty good hard run, so it's about third and, uh, let's call it six. That's number eight, Shane Pelicano on the tackle. Third and six from the 20. Cox takes the snap, looks to throw. Got some pressure, steps up in the pocket, directs and traffic to Kraus at 10 5, and he is diving for the pylon. Let's see where they mark him out at the one yard line. He dove for the pylon. Yeah, nice job. I believe his foot did go out there. Great job by Cox getting out of a little bit of pressure there and then sort of directing traffic and telling Mr. Kraus to move up the field a little bit and it's pitched out there to him. A nice play right there. 3.38 to go here in the third. Huskies knocking on the door, trying to add on to the lead. They lead 50 to 24. And off to Kraus, and he is going to fall into the end zone for another Husky touchdown. That is the, I think, third touchdown for Kraus tonight. Yeah, Bowen Krause had a very good night. This offense has had a good night. Like we said, we talked about coming out and playing in the second half. And so far, they're putting some points on the board here in the second half. Uh, just a good job right there. Peterson on for the PAT. Kick is up, and it is good. So the Huskies lead 57 to 24. Take another look at that Bowen Cross touchdown run on our Greens Excavating Instant Replay. Okay, your Ash County Ford Drive summary. The Huskies went 40 yards, took them five plays, and ended in a one-yard touchdown run by Bowen Kraus. Andrew Peterson added the extra point. So that brings your score with three fifth or three thirty-five left in the third quarter. Your Ash County Huskies fifty-seven, West Wilkes Blackhawks twenty-four. One score update to pass along. Elkin now leads East Wilkes twenty-one to fourteen. That game is probably late in that fourth quarter there in Elkin. Yeah, and that's a that's a uh, well been a well of a football game of course it's got a lot of interest to us we'd like to see uh east with the 21 but and the huskies just need to take care of business and another game has got some playoff implications for the mountain valley conference teams is allegheny now leads north wilkes 33 to 28 that's a, another good and another game. onside kick and that one almost went i think that one might have went backwards <clears throat> he almost missed that one again they had a, uh, Coach Hampton is not happy. He is not happy at all. And they don't have the Cesar kid to kick anymore. 
Yeah, he with you know with uh, Timothy out, and of course the Peterson boy, I guess, is the two kickers, and he is he's very animated, slinging the arms like kick it down the field and whatever. But uh, anyway, it'll be great field starting field position for the Blackhawks. Yeah, and, and their offense has been pretty solid tonight. Conference, Oak and Albion, East Wilkes, one fourteen. I guess if we don't touch it, it's not. They came up and got it. Oh yeah, they can take it anytime they want to. Yeah. Power out once again for the Blackhawks. Handoff to the right side. is going to pick up good positive yards on first down. Yeah, and I mean, that's what they want. Three to four on first down. So they're, they're right on schedule with what they like to do with their offense. Second down for the Blackhawks, second and seven from the 43. Huskies lead 57-24. We're just under three minutes to go here in the third quarter. Hand off to the fullback, and he's going to rumble ahead and be close to the first down. Going to be just short. Going bring up third and short. Going to bring up about third and two again. Well, I mean, okay, there's a, the Blackhawks are pretty dang on good up front, uh, of course, but three yards in the count of dust. Our buddies right now is, of course, this clock. Two thirty now to go in the third quarter, which I thought was going to be a pretty fast third quarter, but it's kind of slowed down here a little bit. Yeah, it's kind of bogged down to a screeching halt. Hand off to the fullback once again, and it's going to be short. Be short. <laughs> Seth Collier on the carry for the Blackhawks. It's going to bring up fourth, and he might have got a half a yard, so let's call it fourth and a half a yard right here. Big fourth down play for both teams. Blackhawks trying to keep the drive alive. We'll call it fourth and a long two. A minute 50 to go here in the third quarter. Two tight ends, power eye. And they're going to get a false start against the Blackhawks. That's going to back them up. Yeah, it's going to make your play call a little different here. So, uh, of course, throwing the ball, they've been successful. What few times they have thrown the ball to the little tight end or even the little uh, pass out quick to the running back here. So, uh, got to stay awake and look for something like that right here. And, and not to anything against West Wilkes, I think they're better than their record shows a little bit, but that's just kind of what one in eight football teams. It's just kind of addictive to the way they play. Uh, Bill Parcells, yeah. you know, uh, he, as he says, uh, you, you are what your record says you are. Yeah. Fourth and long. They're going to throw the slant, and it's oh, almost man. picked off. <laughs> yeah, the senior right there, Elliot, he was looking for that play. He was right there, and uh, I guess as they say, that's why he's a defensive player. Defensive uh linebacker he's sort of a hybrid out there defensive back that's why he plays defensive back i guess and he knocked it down and since he knocked it down we actually get better field position if he had intercepted it yeah we uh would uh hit him right in the hands first and 10 for the huskies they lead 57 24 minute 21 to go in the third we got a motion Ballard and they're doing the pump and go to Poe down the sideline and he's caught it. He's at the 2010. He's going to go in for a Husky touchdown. Beautiful thrown football by Cox. 57 yards touchdown pass to Austin Poe. I tell you what, that was a beautiful throw by Cox right there. Good route, but Cox, it, Cox couldn't have run the ball out there and handed it to him any better. Uh, just a great throw by Cox. Of course, uh, Poe does break one tackle and then takes it on in. Peterson on for the PAT. And the 
kick is up. It is no good, actually. Huskies lead 63-24. We'll take another look at that Dawson Cox, Dawson Poe touchdown on our Greens Excavating Insta Replay. Okay, your Ash County Ford Drive summary. It took the Huskies one play. They went 57 yards. It was a 57-yard touchdown pass from Dawson Cox to Austin Poe. The extra point was no good. So with 108 left in the third quarter, that brings your score. Your Ash County Huskies 63, West Wilkes 24. Congratulations to Ashley for your outstanding representation of Ash County High School. One quick score up 840 North Wilkes has taken the lead now and over Allegheny 35-33. As we'll see, looks like we have changed kickers. <laughs> yeah, he's got Poe out there kicking. Poe did used to kick a little bit in middle school. So, uh, of course, after Mr. Peterson, like we said, he was mad the last time. And Poe's going to kick it. <laughs> it's going to roll all the way down to the one-yard line and stop. Yeah. <laughs> and the Blackhawks are going to take over the 10-yard line. You couldn't have. Okay. That's a pitching wedge right there. Yeah, that is, and, I, and I've got to laugh. Of course, you, you know, I have said this before. I watched the sidelines quite a bit, and I guess Coach Elliott must have said something to Coach Hampton about uh, where Poe kicked that football or something, and Hampton just threw his arms up like, you know. It, yeah. It's sort of funny to see because – of course, we talked to Hampton about it at a Pee Wee game the one night when he was being accused of kicking the onside kicks, and basically uh, Andrew was missing the ball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't trying to kick it onside. <laughs> he wanted to kick it deep. So the Blackhawks will take over the 10-yard line. First and 10. Minute, just over a minute to go in the third quarter. Hand off to Rash. He's rumbling ahead he's still on his feet ball comes loose but it does go out of bounds yeah i was getting ready to say unless yeah it comes back to the spot ball can't be fumbled forward yeah uh so pretty good uh good run there by him gonna bring up about second and two or three here tomorrow everything's kind of going the huskies way right now yeah played a much better second half so far and uh been a good night. Of course, uh, we talked about it earlier, bounce back game. Uh, and so far, they've had a big night in their bounce back game. And then good job, good way for the seniors to go out too. Yeah, it is senior night here at Ash County. Hand off to number 25 up the middle. He's going to be close to a first down. 45 seconds to go here in the third quarter. If it was enough for a Blackhawk first down, they may well. I think they're going to get a play here before the quarter. We have one more play here for the third quarter. Power out once again for the Blackhawks. And it's a pitch to the outside to number three. And there's a flag down in the area of holding. Patrick on the carry, there's a flag on the field. Looks like it was thrown in the holding area here, but we'll see what happens. They're still trying to sort it out here, it looks like. Chop block against the Huskies. What? Chop block penalty called against Ash County. Chop block. How can so you I guess one player had him had an offensive player engaged high, and the other one hit him low. I reckon, but I've never seen that called on defense. Uh, but anyway, uh, we have a chop block. Uh, I've been around a long time, and I think that's the first time I've ever seen a chop block called on the defense. But I want to ask you how long you've been around. That's uh, two business. That's the first time for everything. I've never seen that of you. First and 10 for the Blackhawks. I don't think they're going to get a snap off here in the third quarter. 
And that will do it for the third quarter. At the end of the third quarter, Huskies lead 63-24. We're back in the fourth quarter in the Sky Zone HD. Game of the week. Ash County Ford in downtown West Jefferson wants to be your first and only choice for all your automotive needs. They offer a lifetime warranty on most of the vehicles they sell. They offer the best prices on new Fords and pre-owned vehicles, service parts or body shop repairs, and locally owned and operated with the friendliest and best staff, they are your answer for anything automotive you need. The High Country's Ford dealer since 1919. Ash County Ford, you make the drive, we'll make the deal. When it comes to insuring your home, business, automobiles, and property, you want an agency you can depend on. Miller Insurance has been serving this region for more than 60 years and are proud to now represent Everett Cash Mutual, which specializes in insuring farm property, equipment, livestock, and more. Before you renew your insurance policies, give us a call at 336-246-7151 or come see us in downtown West Jefferson. Miller Insurance is proud to be your hometown insurance agency that supports our hometown teams. Welcome back to the fourth quarter in Sky Zone HD Game of the Week as the Huskies lead 63-24. Handoff on first down to the Blackhawks, and the Huskies are right there. Colby Ball went in on that stop. Uh, one of, the, of course, uh, four seniors tonight. Of course, Colby's played a lot of football here. He's uh, been up on the varsity since he's a sophomore and just does a well of a job. Good to see him make a good play here. Yeah, until this year, he was the he was the center. Yeah, and we talked about this earlier, you know, and it really helped that offensive line when they made that switch. I mm -hmm. think the line got better, and you got to commend him because that's that's what you call a good teammate doing mm -hmm. doing what's best for the team. Always been a center, and you know he probably didn't want to leave that position because he's familiar with it. But yeah, he's just a good teammate. Second eleven for the Blackhawks handoff, and Huskies are right there. He's going to get back to maybe the original line of scrimmage. And that's Drake Elliott again in there, knifing in there for a tackle. There's another one of them seniors having a big night on senior night. But Drake's had just a great senior season. Had a good football career. And he's not, I mean, he played as a sophomore as well, didn't he? He sure did. He's And I've said this comparison before. He's sort of my, like Joe LaCroix or uh, Alex, Alex LaCroix. LaCroix. Yeah. And uh, just uh, smart, heady, makes all the defensive calls and just does a great job. Always in the right position. Yeah, you very seldom will find him out of position. You're exactly right. Handoff on third down, and then we get big chunky yards on third down. Could make it a much more manageable fourth down. I tell you what, and uh, then the Blackhawks are still firing off, hitting right there, uh, and uh, pretty. It's going to bring up about fourth and two here, and uh, I'm sure they're going to go for it. Fourth and a long two for the Blackhawks. Just over 10 minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Huskies lead 63-24. off on fourth down and it's going to be awfully close it's going to be really close right there i don't think he got it just from where this guy on this side's walking and if he sets it right on the line he's got to be short and it looks like that's where the ball is so i'm going to give it to him and it is 63 to 24 yeah i mean hey keep the clock going but it, that was awful close anyway they they do give give them a first down here and uh, 9.45, that's the big thing for us right now. Yeah, we just want that clock to run. Yes, that's exactly right. And, uh, he got looks like he got it running back here. And, uh, of course, we've mentioned a lot of the seniors because they've played, and well, we do have one uh, that's injured and not right. able to play, and that's Isaac Miller. So he, he's uh, another one of the seniors tonight that's going to look like they're going to go out here with a win. Number three on the carry, that's – Garrett Patrick has a good run on first down for the Blackhawks. And, you know, it's not like we could really, you know, with a lead like this, we ain't like we can substitute. We ain't got a lot of players on the sideline. No, I mean, you know, we, talk, we talked about that all year, the uh, the lack of numbers and that Coach Hampton having to play kids both ways more than he likes to. But uh, they've done a good job. And, you know, injuries here lately have started to move oh, yeah. a little bit. But we've had Weatherspoon. Uh, Burgess and Peterson. And I mean, we've had people step up and, and, and play their role and do a good job. Second and 
And off on first down, Huskies are going to meet him at the line. Good job right there by the Huskies, stomping on that whistle and not throwing anybody down. You know, you don't want to do anything really crazy right here. Yeah, Poe in on that one in uh, 77, Roll or uh, Pennington on that in on that uh, tackle. And there's uh, you know one of those sophomores that we pulled up, and uh, uh, he's going to be a heck of a ball player, I think. And I think he's going to be a great lineman. He's built for it, and he and he, really he likes, likes it, yeah. and he loves to play the game. So. Mm -hmm. Second and long, pitch to the left side. Good block on that far side, and he's going to be going to have the first down and more. That's all up to the 20-yard line. Yeah, nice run. We've done a pretty bad job of not staying outside right there and letting him get to the outside and sort of took a bad angle. But anyway, good job by the uh, West Wilkes running back right there. First and 10 with 7.45 to go. And tossed to number three. He's going to get outside. I don't know who tackled him there, but that's a pretty good tackle from behind. Uh, two, they're a long ways away from us there, but they're trying to, of course, Westwood's trying to get some more points on the board, and this defense is trying to hold them out here. One update, uh, North Wilkes leads Allegheny now 42-40. to 40. It's been a back-and-forth battle all there's, night. There's been a lot of shootouts in uh, Mountain Valley this year, some high-scoring games, and it uh, uh, looks like uh, North Wilkes last couple of weeks has turned into Cinderella a little bit here. They're, they're playing well. Second and five, seven minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Quarterbacks going to keep it, bring up third down. Yeah, I think they're just trying to grind it out here too. I mean, they're wanting to get up, get down the mountain, and uh, get some rest. One final to report: Watauga beats Freedom forty-eight to thirty-three, so that will give them the conference championship once again. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure will congratulations to Hobbick and them guys over there. He, we talk about it a lot. He does a tremendous job with that Watauga football team. And off to the fullback, and it's going to be just short of the first down. So it's going to be fourth and what a half a yard, a yard here. See what they come in, come up with right here. Another tackle by Elliott. And Elliott's been everywhere tonight. He's had a really good game for his uh, senior game here. Of course, it may you know depends on what happens next week. Shakeout. I think the Huskies will be back home in a couple of weeks to play probably a first round playoff game. And we go to Star Mount next week. Which that's been a house of horror for the Huskies. It really has. They have not played well. And it's going to be a timeout. West Wilkes. Now I call West Wilkes. Our varsity soccer team fell to start about 2 1. And it is the final. Eastern. Elkin has defeated East Wilkes 21 14. So if we can hold serve next week and they hold serve, I'm not sure who they play next week, but if both of us win, it'll be a shared conference. Yeah, it'll be a co conference uh, championship, uh, what they'll call it. Of course, if it falls that way, you know. With the way the league is, the split league, Elkins going to be the best 1A team coming out of there, and uh, Ash is going to be the best uh, 2A team coming out for as far as playoff seedings go. Mm, still haven't gotten an update lately on the Wilkes Central Star Mount game. And that's usually a barn burner. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, I think that East Wilkes plays Wilkes Central next week. Now, I may be wrong, but for some reason I got that in my mind. I do think they always end the season playing each yeah, other. that's what I was thinking. And, <clears throat> but Elk and I'm not sure. Uh, have they played Allegheny yet or West? I don't know. I don't know. How about North? I can't remember. But, uh... <laughs> so here comes a big fourth down play here. <laughs> 
Fourth down, and the quarterback's going to keep it, and the Huskies are going to meet him at the line, and just going to have to see. In second effort, like he may got have got it. Push here, yeah, they're giving him a spot, and he, and he didn't get it. So it looks like he got it on the second push there by the lineman. Had to help a little bit. Pretty good job here by the uh, by the. Uh, Five twenty-five to go here in the fourth. Blackhawks trying to add on a score. And of course the Huskies, you know, pride they're gonna to try to hold them out. There he goes. And he is going to be in for the touchdown. That's number 25, Seth Collier. I tell you what, they pretty much collapsed that side of the line right there. Good blocking by uh, West Wilkes' offensive line there and just an easy score. Five oh seven. 7 Go in the fourth quarter, West Wilkes will attempt the two-point conversion. They must not have a kicking game. They haven't attempted no, it all They now. haven't attempted a kick, of course. Uh, Never really the kicked it deep on kickoff. Cutoffs, no. So, the, and they have one for two all night long. So, uh, yeah, which they, is unusual. I mean, West Wilkes used to be known for their special teams. They had that one kicker that committed to like Florida, Florida State. State. Yep, yep. I remember that back in the day. He was a very good kicker. Yeah. Quick pitch to the left, and the Huskies are going to come up. There's going to be, it's going to be Ryan Blevins. Ryan Blevins is shot from his linebacker position and run him down in the backfield. So you keep him out on the two point conversion. So with 5 0 7 left in the fourth quarter, uh, your Ash County Huskies are still ahead uh, 63 to 30. 33 point lead for the Huskies. Uh, one area of score, Owen leads Avery County 54-32. to 32. It Looks like Owen was 4-4 four four on the year, and Avery is 5-4. But Owen has put it on Avery at home. Yeah, and that's sort of surprising. I mean, that's a pretty good league, and Owen's usually a pretty good football team, and Avery's much improved and had a good year, you know, considering what the, where they've been in the last several years. It seems like ever since that Mountain Heritage loss, they've just kind of – been reeling. Yeah, and uh, you know, of course, they're gonna have that quarterback and uh, some people back next year, so they'll be strong again next year. Mm-hmm. Be a big game here next year. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're gonna if everybody comes back like supposed to, we're gonna have a lot of returners next year. Yeah. So, and key returners. Yeah, so. key returners. Well, people who play a lot of football this year. Yeah, and last year. <laughs> yeah, and last year. It'll be much like, you know, that team last year had 18 seniors on it. Yeah, it's going to be about the same deal. Onside kick, and Huskies are going to fall. I think it's going to be Ballard that falls on the football at the 45. Ballard's had a good game here tonight. He's done a lot of different things and just really had a good game for the Huskies tonight. So we'll see the Husky offense come out with 5.05 to go here in the fourth quarter, leading 63-30. to First and 10 from the 45 for the Huskies. Cox takes the snap, hands off to Kraus. He makes one guy miss. He gets to the sideline. He's got the first down. A flag has been thrown, probably a block in the back or a holding. Yeah, yeah probably a block in the back, like you said, over there, looks like. And so that's he needs to stay in bounds. Back. Yeah, he does need to stay in bounds right there. Keep that clock running. That's pretty much all we're wanting to do right now. But and you know, like you said, uh, we don't have any subs. So I mean, yeah, I mean, who else you gonna hand the ball off to? <laughs> you could put Blevins, maybe Miller in there or something. But it, you know, they're just trying to run the clock out here with 4:54 left. I was going to bring up 
First and seven after the penalty. Cox hands off to Krause. And he's going to pick up five or six yards on the carry. Yeah, good job. And we've talked about this a lot in late games and like in the Elkin game when he really had some big young runs to kill the clock up the middle. He always has two hands on the ball when he's in traffic up the middle, which is good to see. North Wilkes has scored again. They now lead 49 to 40. It looks like they may get out of Hayes with the win. Second and six. Hand off to Kraus. And he's brought down in the backfield. Yeah, he probably lost a yard right there, but we talked about it. Big thing is, let's get this time off the clock, get out of here without getting anybody hurt, and prepare for next week. Third down, 342 to go. Probably him. Probably be a handoff once again on third down. Now they're going to pass on third down. And they get it out to Ballard for the first down. So it will be a first down for the Huskies. And now they can pretty much run this thing out, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, and that right there was just to make sure they get to first down. I think they'll hand it off. They're bringing Blevins in now. So they're definitely going to go two black back set here and uh, – Maybe try to get this uh, more time off the clock. Mark, we talked a little bit about Dr. Pepper play of the game during the break, and and I think we agreed just give it to the seniors tonight here on senior night. I think so. Of course, you've had Drake Elliott with a great game out here tonight. He's had eight or nine tackles. And, uh, uh oh, Bone Cross is loose. done a little bit of everything, and he ain't quite done right there. He was close to breaking another one. If I'm not wrong, I think Bowen's got four touchdowns again tonight. I know he's got over 100 yards, over 100 yards rushing. I mean, he had 90 on one one carry and probably pretty close to 100 catching the ball. And uh, and uh, of course, uh, um, Kobe Bowen's done a tremendous job on the line, offense and defense, like he always has. Just had a tremendous career, and Isaac Miller's been a good asset to him. And he's just had the injury bug all year and really not got to play a whole lot. So congratulations to them seniors, and that's going to be our Dr. Pepper player of the games. And they're going to hand off to one of those seniors, Drake Elliott. He's going to try to get outside. He breaks through. He's going to have the first down. Good run by the senior on uh, first – pick up the first down. <coughs> Yeah, nice hard run by uh, Mr. Elliott there. And like you say, a senior going to let him come in, and it's going to be second and short right here. Second and a yard now for the Huskies. I think I, you can kind of see Hampton and Piscopo down there trying to do the math, how many snaps they yeah, need to take in the 40-second play clock. And... Yeah, I think, uh, you know, if they can get it down, I don't believe West will call any timeouts. They're probably going to start taking a knee here before long. Mm -hmm. Two back set once again for the Huskies. Kind of waiting on the back judge to start counting before they snap the ball. Don't have to. <laughs> yeah, he's been counting. Yeah. And they take the snap, hand it off to Krause. And he's going to get up to about the 12 yard line. The big thing here is he, you know, he's going to get, what, three or four yards and pick up that first one. And just seeing Hampton give Piscopo the signal, they're going to get in the victory formation. Yeah, taking the headsets off here. So, uh, yeah, it looks like the Huskies are going to have a great bounce back win here after a disappointing loss last week. And they're going to stay in a first place tie in the Mountain Valley Conference. Yeah. Next week they head off the mountain down to Star Mount, and you talked about it earlier. We just don't play well at Star Mount. And, you know, history through the years we have not done it, just played well at Star Mount. So, but maybe we can get that monkey off our back this week. And there's the first knee. We'll have to do that one more time. Mm -hmm. 
46 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. Muskies lead 63 to 30. That's probably going to be your final. Going to take one more knee here. And seal this thing away. And that will do it. And with that time will expire. Final score 63 30. So your final here from Ash County. Huskies win 63 to 30. Next week we head off the mountain to Star Mountain to see if the Huskies can at least bring back a share of the Mountain Valley Conference Championship. For Mark Cutler, I am Dusty Farmer. We'll see you next week on the Sky Zone HD Game of the Week.